What's up? Just checking in. Uh, so we're at the start of day 10, and this is a Thursday, so uh, we're still a little ahead of schedule, but um, at 7 a.m. we should be clicking on our multi-loaded sugar lump, which is a golden sugar lump. Yesterday, when I did multi-saving, I saved... Uh, as many as I possibly could. I got 345. 20th one um, was a golden sugar lump, which is insanely good odds for this specific uh, save session, but you know, this is actually like our 800th save, um, <laughs> counting the previous two sessions, so that's actually about right. Yeah, so we got two JC Queen Beats growing, um, almost at two mil. It's harvesting time. Should be able to get seven from it. Hey, there we go. So that's the Golden Sugar Lump Shadow Achievement, and also our 30 Coalescing Lumps Achievement. What's nice is that the Harvest X amount, you know, Harvest X Coalescing Sugar Lumps Achievements, um, don't count the action of harvesting, but rather, um, how many Sugar Lumps you've gotten in total. Harvesting one golden, getting seven sugar lumps counts as seven harvests as far as the achievement is concerned. With that, we have a five by five garden, and this is now large enough that we can get four juicy queen meats growing in here at once. I went ahead and prettied up like the math here and just wrote a little comment about each equation. So uh, yeah, if y'all want to check that out and be nerds with me. There is one uh, slight complication that I just encountered for our uh, sugar lump weekly strategy, which is I I bought a bunch of uh, grandmas um, to try to do a combo and get some more uh, like heavenly chips and just you know try to work on getting a good ascension while we're waiting for everything else. But uh, I encountered a problem, which is that when you buy a bunch of grandmas after you sell them off, the sugar lump keeps growing at the faster rate. All right, we're a few hours into day eleven. And I realized I've been making a mistake with the stock market. Uh, as you can see, I also turned down the graphic settings. Um, just because it's like 90 degrees here and getting hotter. And I'm just trying to minimize the heat that uh, my laptop or desktop produces. I've been pretty much like not even using, you know, the little graph down here to make buying and selling decisions. All I do is, you know, if the uh, current price is above the stock's resting price, I sell it. If it's below the resting price, I buy it. And the resting price, um, more or less, is pretty easy to figure out. It's just 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. <laughs> the problem with that is I was assuming that the resting price was also the average price. And that's actually totally not correct. What I did was I'm wrote out the entire um, stock market uh, logic in Python, simulated a million minutes of it, so a million ticks, and then got the average for all 17 of the stocks. Hey, it's uh, a little over a week later, I'm just editing this video together, and a few days after I put this graph and simulation together, I triple checked the code and found a couple errors, and the values turned out to be a little different. I'll, I'll show that a little bit later in the video. But the point of this graph and simulation right here is just that it turns out that the average and resting prices of the stocks in the stock market are different, and that you can actually play it about 20% faster if you base your purchase and selling decisions off the uh, true averages rather than the resting prices. This is just surprising to me because every other player who's I've ever seen kind of publicly talk about their stock market strategy based all their decisions on the resting prices. Okay, back to the video. Also, I just checked the grimoire, and so we have a click frenzy here, but if we do a weird sell pattern, so Hagler's Charm, sell another Promising Fates, we get a building special. So this puts us in a position to set up the combo that we failed to set up. I'm gonna see if I can get a Frenzy and Dragon Harvest saved, and then we'll go for an Elder Frenzy and see if we can pull this off. We got the first half of the setup, so now we're just waiting on an Elder Frenzy. We got the combo. So if I reset here, I've saved it somewhere else. So, you know, if I, I copy something else, no problem. We have Elder Frenzy, Click Frenzy, 
um, building special, dragon harvest, normal frenzy. This is just absurd. So we can even sell. And, it, you know, it just gets even crazier. So I'll give it a few shots and see what my best is. After all that, we were able to get every building except the Cortex Bakers up to 650. So these two achievements here are the only two left that depend on the amount of buildings we own. Additionally, we're really close to getting all the upgrades. So one more we get from the Dragon. And the other upgrade, we don't unlock till we get 650 of the Cortex Bakers. Then one last thing came out of this uh, combo, which is we could get enough um, farms or kitchens or whatever to buy one more of each. And there we go. Uh, so there's an achievement for owning 1,000 of a single stock. Okay, so it's day 12 now, and I've become kind of obsessed with simulating the stock market. Uh, like, I triple-checked the code, um, and there were two errors, so I fixed those, and the, uh, essentially, the average prices are pretty different than the resting prices. They're, they're kind of squished towards the middle, so, like, for the lower ones, the average price is a good deal higher, and for the higher stocks, the average price is a good deal lower. And this math is all done for having level 1 buildings, and it doesn't change that severely as you level up your buildings, um, but the averages will be a couple dollars higher. The easy trick is start at 40 dollars for cereal and count up by fives so 40 45 50 55 60 and so on those are going to be um, all within five percent accurate of the average price for that stock and that's uh for having supreme intellect active so what i also did was i tested over a few million um, market cycles so a few million minutes of time various strategies for the stock market and the two things I was tweaking was how often you check the stock market. Like, are you checking it every minute, 10 minutes, um, 60 minutes? I did up to 90 minutes. And uh, what threshold or buffer you could call it you're using for um, purchasing your stock. So what most people do is, you know, the simplest strategy is you look at a stock. If the price is above its average, you sell if you own any. And if the price is below the average, you buy if you don't own any and that works pretty well it's you know you don't have to look at this and try to guess at the trajectories it's it's a pretty low maintenance strategy and what some people will do to try to improve that strategy is use a buffer around the average so say your buffer is twenty dollars what you'll do is you'll only sell a stock if it goes more than twenty dollars above its average and you're only going to buy a stock if it falls $20 or more beneath its average. So a few interesting things came out of, you know, all the simulations. Uh, one is that if you're checking the stock market very frequently, like every 10 minutes or less, um, using a buffer is, is good. So, you know, if you're checking it just every minute, um, a buffer of $40 is optimal. And if you're checking it every 10 minutes, a buffer of $30 is optimal. Uh, the interesting thing is that that stops after 10 minutes pretty quickly. So once you get to like, say you're checking it, you know, every 45 minutes, every hour or more, it's bad to use a buffer. So the optimal um, strategy, say for checking it every 60 minutes is to either use a $10 buffer or no buffer, um, both of which are pretty much the same. And the other thing that's weird is that oddly, you actually make more money checking the stock market infrequently so not that often um, you can see checking it like every minute or every 10 minutes the prices like the dollars per minute you get is way lower than actually if you're checking it like every 45 minutes so if you're wondering like the optimal best strategy out of all the simulations was checking it every 50 minutes with a buffer of ten dollars in the simulation that got a little over one thousand eight hundred dollars per tick uh, the strategy I'll be using, just because it's a little easier, it's, it's lazier and it's easier to implement, is to check the stock market once an hour with no buffer at all. So just easy, if stock is above average, sell, if stock is below average, buy. And that turns out to be actually only about 5% less effective than uh, the optimal strategy, which is nice because it's like, you know, only a fourth of the mental effort. And then the last thing I did was... Um, 
I test it. So the optimal, you know, strategy was to use a buffer of ten dollars uh, at fifteen minutes. So what I did was I tested um, the same strategy. So using ten dollars as your buffer, but around the resting prices instead of uh, the average price. And that's what this baby blue um, line in here is. You can see it's actually way less. So um, it's about $200 per tick less effective than uh, using um, the true averages of the stocks rather than their resting values. We're a few hours into day 13, so almost done with week two. Um, I realized a few tricks uh, for the weekly lump schedule. So um, we got a caramelized sugar lump from this multi-save session. I, I, I didn't even do 100 saves this time just because, you know, long term, I'm probably only going to be doing like 50 saves per session. Uh, but I realized a few things about our schedule. So uh, first off, you know, it's not even 4 p.m. yet. And I wasn't the schedule isn't say to do the multi load until, you know, 7 p.m. What I realized is we can tell what kind of sugar lump it's going to be um, before it's even mature. For two of our multi loads, uh, Sundays and Tuesdays, we can load it up like five hours earlier, figure out what kind of sugar lump we're going to get and then start playing that save. Now, when we do that, we can't click the sugar lump until the scheduled time to keep us on you know, track. But, you know, this just lets us play the stock market, cast spells, click golden cookies for a couple extra hours each week. The other thing I learned is that it's it's kind of hard to use the grandmas to keep the schedule in line, actually. So, like, for instance, the grandmas didn't seem to be changing the sugar lump time when I was buying and selling them on Thursday and Friday. But then on Saturday, when the sugar lump was ripe, um, the plan was to sell them before multi-saving, but when you sell the grandma, or when you sell off your grandmas, it's such a weird thing, when you sell off your grandmas when the sugar lump's ripe, it auto-harvests the sugar lump. And so it's just kind of a pain to try to use the grandmas to keep the schedule in line. And I screwed it up beforehand even too, so I had to do the multi-save at 11 p.m. But anyways, what I think I might experiment with now is seeing if it's easier to use Rigidel instead. Yeah, everything else is pretty much going to plan. Um, so I didn't feel like uh, scumming in four Juicy Queen Beats, so I just stopped at three. Stock Market's actually getting pretty close to liquid assets. Um, and yeah, we're about two thirds of the way to the final Grimoire achievement. Golden Cookies still has a long way to go. Uh, we're about a little over 10% done with the uh, final Shadow achievement we gotta get. And I've been putting our sugar lumps towards uh, the cursors instead of the garden because we can already fit in, you know, three or four juicy queen beats and I don't really need the extra um, row and column. Uh, but I figure since pretty much I'm now, whether I like it or not, going to go for gaseous assets, um, the hardest stock market shadow achievement, uh, It's it'll just go a little faster if I can buy a little bit more of each stock and... Um, having a higher cursor level lets you do that. And yeah, <laughs> so this is pretty much the grind, man. Like, this is what we're in for for the next year. I just realized it's not day 13, it's day 14. I get thrown off just because uh, right now we're 13 days and four hours into the run. So we're four hours into the 14th day. But, you know, the uh, stat screen here chops off the hours and just shows how many whole days you've been playing. So 13. Um, so when in doubt, trust either the stat screen or the date on the recording software, which again is day, month, year format. Um, not the day number, because I have not been good about making sure that's accurate. 9.9 .9 million, uh, so go ahead and get liquid assets right now. There we go. For, okay, so uh, we're almost done with day 16. Um, no new achievements, but we're getting pretty close to the last grimoire. Maybe like 40% of the way done with gaseous assets, 30 to 40% of the way done. And yeah, so this is pretty much the strat for the garden at this point. I find it's too much effort to save scum in the last uh, juicy queen beat, so I've been pretty much just leaving it at three. Um, the math still works out, we can get above three per day pretty easily with that. So we are at 52 lumps, and almost at... 16 total days played so uh you know that would be 48 lumps would be the quota that we need to hit so we're a little ahead of schedule that's it for this episode though thanks for watching